Hello everyone and welcome to the Science Toys Fair of Ayuka National Science Day 2021. As every year we are not going to meet in person this time but we have not kept any stone unturned and we have made a visual treat for you all with the help of different students in different schools. I hope you enjoy this visual treat. We are going to learn to make different science toys. We are going to understand the science behind them and using very simple material available at home. So let's start with very simple and close to our hearts topic that is sound. Let us learn how to make simple musical instruments with straw, paper and even leaves around us. Namaskar, I am Vignes Noso of Standard 7. I will show you how to make a straw flute. I will take one straw and I will cut its end like a sharpened pencil. Now I will flatten the straw. I will blow air through the straw. You can see that when I blow air, the flaps vibrate and it produces the same way. I have made one smaller float and one longer float. Now I will blow through each of them. We can see that the longer float makes the sound with lower frequency and the shorter float makes the sound with higher frequency. I will show you again. In the same way, I have made another flute and made some holes in it. We can use this hole to make different sounds. We can also make a flute from a paper. To make a flute, first we have to cut the paper with a small flap remaining. Now I will roll the paper. I will stick it with the help of glue so that it, it will not open. I will fold the flap and now let us try to blow air through this. You can see that the flap vibrates to make the sound like this. Same way we can use natural material like leaves to make a flute. To make a flute from leaves, we have to cut the leaf from both the sides. Now I will roll the leaf. After rolling, we have to cut the tip of the leaf like this. Now I will blow through the fruit. Did you enjoy these toys? They are so easy to make, right? Just a leaf from a tree by your house can make a leaf flute. So I hope you have all understood how to make this and you will definitely try these at home. So did you see how the rid of the paper flute vibrated? So these vibrations create sound. So let us understand how these vibrations create sound with one more simple example just using a normal scale. If you use a plastic scale, it will give you sound but we recommend that you use a steel scale. My name is Shriyas Pilapkar, Standard 8. Now I will show you the vibration of metal scale. You can see here is a metal scale. Now I will show you how the scale vibrates. See here. We 
can also play with it. Thank you. So now if you have understood that vibrations create sound, let us see how a vibrating air column plays a role in different creating different frequencies. how sound is produced. Now let us understand what is the frequency of sound, what is wavelength of sound and what is the relation of these two. We can also do this with while doing a simple experiment. You just need some colored water, a straw and an app in your smartphone. You can use G-string app or any app that records frequency of sound. Vibrations are all around us and these vibrations produce the sound. Some of these sounds we can hear and others we cannot hear. The aim of our experiment is to understand the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency of the sound. Wavelength is the distance between adjacent crests which is the upper part of a wave or adjacent troughs which is the lower part of a wave. And frequency is the number of waves produced in one second. Now, for this experiment, we need straw or a PVC pipe, marker, ruler, tape, colored water and a mobile application for measuring frequency. First, take a straw and cover one end of the straw with a cello tape. Then using the ruler, mark the straw in, in centimeters. Then blow in the, in the straw to produce the sound and using the mobile application record the frequency achieved. Now add some water to the straw and record the water level. One more time blow into the straw and record the frequency. Perform this activity with different water level. Now we know the water level and the frequency with the help of the app. Now to know the wavelength we should know the air column which is nothing but the pressure or the weight of the air in a certain place. Now to know it we have to just subtract the water level from the total length of the straw. And to know the wavelength we have to just multiply this air column to, uh, to 4 as this is a closed air column. I have also converted the wavelength in meters. And I have also calculated the frequency manually to just check the accuracy of the app. So I am performing the same activity using a PVC pipe. As the PVC pipe is opaque, I cannot see the water level. So I am using a, a measuring cup which comes with any syrup to measure the volume of the water I am putting inside. So to, uh, to calculate the water level, you have to just divide this volume by pi r square. And here R is the radius of this pipe. Now this table here shows us my observations. You can see that as our air column length is decreasing, our wavelength is also decreasing. But the frequency is increasing. Here I have plotted a wavelength versus frequency graph. This shows us the readings from the straw and this shows us the readings from the PVC pipe. You can see as the wavelength is increasing, our frequency is also decreasing. Now, in other words, wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. That is, if the frequency increases, the wavelength will decrease and if the frequency decreases, then the wavelength will increase. So now, when you saw how frequency is created and what wavelength actually is, can you imagine how a wave looks or what is the wavelength of a wave. Let us see a small toy and we are going to also show you how to make this toy. 
and imagine that you're looking at a wave and the wavelength of the wave. Here's the wave model ready. Waves are disturbance or oscillations that travel through a medium, transferring energy from one point to another point. This cannot be seen with naked eyes. So how are we supposed to know what a wave is? When you tap one straw at one end, you see a wave traveling. Observe the straw. They aren't moving from one end to another. It's only the wave that is traveling. Similarly, in the case of sound waves, the waves travels from mouth to the ear drum through air. This is how we can hear. Instead of straw, we can use various materials like bamboo sticks and cycle spoke. Such simple experiments, right? You just need straw and some cello tape. If you don't want to use straws, you can also use bamboo sticks or any sticks lying around your house or cycle spokes. This will be heavier objects but they'll give you a better visualization of a wave. So, do you want to see some more experiments like these? If you want to see these experiments, if you want to make them on your own, you can also visit our website that is Ayuka SciPop. We have thousands of experiments on our website. Now, let's take a look of a chemical experiment where you can play with different chemicals in your households like vinegar, uh, baking soda and you just need one balloon. Hello everyone, my name is Raj Vishwanath Marathe. I study in Standard 5. I Dr. K.B. Hedhiyavar Vidya Mandir Karapurthis Sakri Goa. Today, I will demonstrate a small reaction between baking soda and vinegar. For this experiment, I have taken some baking soda and put it in this balloon. And I have taken some vinegar with red color in this bottle. Now, I, I will attach the balloon to the mouth of the bottle. Make sure while doing so, you don't pour the powder even the slightest in the bottle. And that the mouth of your bottle isn't too wide. So, now we are ready with our setup. As I will lift this balloon up, you will see all the baking soda going into the vinegar and the ballooning slips. Isn't it wonderful? But now, how did this happen? This happened because when one molecule of sodium bicarbonate, that is baking soda, reacts with one molecule of acetic acid, which is the vinegar, forms carbonic acid and sodium acetate. The weak carbonic acid in the step 2 decomposes to become water and carbon dioxide. So there are two steps in this whole reaction. The first one is the double displacement reaction and the second one is decomposition reaction. So now how does the balloon inflate? This happens because when carbon dioxide escapes the solution as bubbles, effervescence is created, which it gets collected in this balloon, causing it to inflate. Now, how do we verify that the gas inside this is carbon dioxide only? For that, I will use a simple method. For this method to work, we will have to take a matchstick, light it up and hold it near the mouth of the bottle. Make sure that none of the carbon dioxide escapes. Did you see that? The matchstick extinguished. Why did this happen? 
because carbon dioxide is a non supporter of combustion causing it to extinguish now what can this be used for it can be used as a simple fire extinguisher thank you for watching bye wasn't it exciting to see the balloon getting inflated but while doing this experiment be sure that you don't touch your hands to your eyes your nose and your mouth be careful if needed you can take help of your parents now let us do one more experiment or we can see a toy where we need some lemons some zinc wires some copper wires and one led hello friends today i have come with a new experiment for you so let's start for this experiment we need four half lemons four copper wire and four zinc wire or plates and a small bulb we have to join one copper wire to one zinc plate likewise join other two now we have now we have fixed all these wires in the lemon in a such a way that each half lemon contain one copper wire and one zinc plate this way this half lemon contain copper wire so i will put zinc plate here and this half lemon contain zinc plate so i will put copper wire here let's try to connect the bulb wow bulb glows let's check how it looks in dark It's amazing. Is it not? So in this lemon battery, the chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy when you see the light bulb glowing. So what is actually happening? The electrons that zinc is trying to lose are carried by the citric acid in the lemon, which is also called the electrolyte. and these are gained by copper wire so make sure your zinc and copper wire don't touch each other inside the lemon so they should be a little far away from each other so that the electrons can flow from the citric acid in the lemon which is the electrolyte here you can see actual chemical reaction happening actual chemical energy getting converted into electrical energy and the led glowing I hope you have loved all these chemical reactions happening and let's move to some flying toys. Here you also need some straw and just some colored paper. Hello everyone. I am Anushree Sachin Sambhaji. Today I am making a toy of second week of science fun zone. For this we will require one straw, a glue, or you can use cellotape then we'll need a scissor and two strips around 16 cm to 2 cm wide and 10 cm to 2 cm wide so let's make the toy so now we have to take these two strips and roll them like this So both the strips we will roll and stick with the help of the glue or with the help of the cellar tape. So this is my rolls. Now next is we'll take this straw and we'll stick these rolls like this. Let's take these two rolls. So I have stick them with the help of this cellar tape.
Wasn't this glider amazing? These flying toys are my personal favorite. So, I'm going to show you one more easy toy which includes just a paper aeroplane which you make daily in classroom and just a paper which we need to fold like this. did you see that the potential energy stored in the rubber band was getting converted into kinetic energy which was used to fly the aeroplane. Now let us see one more very exciting toy related to gravity. Hello friends, let's have fun with gravity toys. We can see that everything that we throw in air falls down on the earth. This is due to gravity of the earth. Gra earth has certain force that pulls everything towards itself and not flying in the air. This is called gravity. Now, let's make a small toy on the gravity of the earth. To make this, we require a bottle, a pointed object to make a hole on the bottle and some water. First, take the bottle and make a hole on the bottle. Now, let's pour water inside the bottle. Make sure that put a finger on the hole to block the water. Now, let's see what happens when we open the hole. See, the water is flowing out from the hole. This is due to gravity of the earth. Gravity of the earth pulls the water towards itself. The water is not falling down because my hand is obstructing the water to fall down. Now let's see what happens when we drop the bottle. Did you see that? The bottle stops coming out from the hole when we drop the bottle. This is because the bottle and the bottle falls at the same time as the gravity pulls them at the same time. As they fall at the same rate of acceleration, the water is already taking the easiest part to the ground and it does not get a chance to come out from the hole. Thank you. Wasn't it fun? To see that the bottle filled with water was having a hole but the water inside the bottle was not coming out. It was really fascinating. Please try it at home. And now we are here at the last toy of our visual tree. That is a rainbow. I hope all of you love rainbows. Now we are going to show you how you can make a real rainbow of seven different colors at your own home. Here there is a bowl, mirror and some water. The mirror is half in the water. When sun rays fall on the mirror, the reflection of sun is here. You can see and the rainbow is there. So nice. 
I hope you have enjoyed the science toys visual treat that we had for you today. Also go on our website where you can find thousands of such toys that you can make at home. You can also subscribe our YouTube channel where you can find videos of scientists with such toys. Subscribe and share the YouTube videos. Also enjoy the entire science day. Happy science day.